Hello Robin C2U, you have a question for me and I have an answer. Do you have a breakdown of kilowatt hours generated for the north panels for the year, especially January, February, March? Well yes I do and I'm going to give you even more than that in this video. I'm going to show you why north facing panels, northwest, northeast facing panels, they're great and we need to get away from this old school thinking of only south facing panels. Let me get into it by reminding you of my setup or if you're new here for the first time I've got six 430 watt panels on my southeast facing roof which is on the front of the house and on the rear of the house I've got 16 430 watt panels which face northwest and to some people that may seem controversial um, I've got an 8.8 .8 .8 kilowatt sunsink inverter which all of those panels go into that one inverter and it was installed by Dorset Solar Solutions and Amy and Martin were just absolutely phenomenal in helping me get the system that I wanted and that I really believed would generate the most for my uh, home. So this is how the system is generated since it was installed until the end of June. I haven't included July so these are just the complete months. <clears throat> the blue bars are my southeast array and the orange bars are the northwest facing array and as you can see they follow those seasonal trends and it looks like the gap between the northwest and the southeast panels widens during the summer months which would make sense the sun is higher in the sky, it can reach those northwest panels a lot easier in the summer and of course the sun also stays very high by the time it gets round to that northwest uh, orientation effectively. Okay, I've converted that chart to make it a little bit easier into a line graph instead because I know that those bar charts kind of, that gives us a bit of an idea, but it's easier to see the gap between them when we look, now look at the line chart. The interesting thing is that for me in my home, I still generate more electricity from the northwest facing panels during the winter months, but it is 16 panels versus six. Now is a good time to remind you, if you're not subscribed, the vast majority of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps the channel and you can do all the other YouTube stuff. Please like it. Um, so I've converted this now into per panel generation. And you can see the gap is really closing up. So I've taken the total kilowatt hours that were generated by each array, divided it by the respective number of panels, six or 16, and I've got this per panel calculation now, okay? Let's once again convert that to a line graph and have a little look. What interesting trends do we find? Well, in December of 2024, my per panel production for northwest and southeast was almost exactly the same. It didn't matter at all in that bleak month which way the solar panels were facing. And that could be for many, many reasons, but ultimately my south, uh, my northwest array is very well suited for soaking up diffused and dispersed light and indirect sunlight. Um, so when there's cloud cover, the Northwest Array does really, really well. And I'll get into some of the reasons why I think that is um, my theory. Now, you can see that it, the trend kind of follows uh, quite a linear trend, to be honest. A lot of people expected that my Northwest panels would only perform really well in the summer months, massively outperforming Southeast, and that it would then completely drop off and you would see that the Southeast would perform so much better per panel in the winter months. That doesn't seem to be the case. Actually, the gap is fairly consistent overall. And as a percentage, as a ratio, Yes, there is a bit more of a difference, but per panel in terms of kilowatt hours produced per panel per month is fairly equal. And interestingly, for the first time in June 2025, the northwest facing panels actually outperformed the southeast facing ones. That appears to be something to do with temperature. Um, okay, so this is the total production you can see on the left hand side. Since I've had the system installed, Southeast uh, has produced 4,420 4, kilowatt hours, and Northwest has produced 8,872 kilowatt hours. Now, if we 
change that into per panel production, you can see that Southeast panels have earned their keep 703 kilowatt hours per panel. So of course, if you have a perfect roof that's orientated towards south that is still preferable that's not my argument here i'm not saying all i'm saying is if you put panels on your northwest facing roof which basically everyone told me not to do and then martin actually martin at dorset solar solutions he actually did the calculations and he said yeah this is a goer this does actually work out 555 kilowatt hours per panel nothing to sniff at Okay, so these were some of the PVGIS calculations. This first one is for my southeast system. My southeast system is marginally outperforming. Um, what's uh, PVGIS calculated? Um, but it's fairly close. Whereas the northwest array is also fairly similar um, to the uh, estimations or the calculations by the PVGIS system. But the Northwest system does outperform it considerably when you compare it to Southeast. I don't know why that is. I don't know what that is about the model and the way that they calculate it. That the Southeast is more accurate and more, more closely in line with what I'm actually generating compared to the Northwest. And the Northwest is actually a good step up. I don't know. Draw your own conclusions. Um, you know, if uh, you've seen my channel before, I have a bit of shading on the southeast roof, and it's caused by this uh, front part of the roof here. Now, it only gets shading for some parts of the year, um, depending on how low the sun is in the sky. And I've recorded a time lapse of this before and shown it in various videos. The sun does rise over in the northeast, and then it comes round southeast round to south, southwest, round to west, and then finishes up northwest. Um, I don't know how much of a, a hindrance this is causing. In the winter months, it certainly is, when the sun is lower in the sky. And this uh, chart here from my Tigo optimizers is one measurement that shows that they've reclaimed 60 kilowatt hours just just in 2024 from partial shading issues that the Tigo optimizers were able to rectify. Of course, if there's hard, big shading and that roof is shading the whole entire panel, for example, or panels, then there's not much that the Tigo optimizers can do about that. Um, on my feeling and my observation is that actually the shading on the front roof is far more limited than I thought it would be. So what about the cost and the investment here? Now, my system overall, it was about £10,000. Um, and if you split that evenly between the arrays, it would be £5,000 for the southeast array and £5,000 for the northwest array. And the reason that I do that is that most of the quotes that I was getting, they were just for the front of the house five or six panels some people were delusional but they were doing desktop surveys and saying seven or eight panels including the inverter and you know g99 or g98 and everything else and mcs and they were quoting roughly about five thousand pounds to put solar on the front of the house and then to up grade and put a bigger inverter and everything else it was roughly adding about five thousand pounds to add the rear system on you've already got scaffolders and electricians and roofers on site so there's you know certain economies of scale here and so if we wanted to be a little bit fairer let's say that really in my system six thousand pounds of the cost went towards the northwest system an array and four thousand to the southeast What's that per panel in terms of cost? That works out at £667 per panel on the southeast and £375 per panel on the northwest. So the northwest array is looking like a bargain. Per kilowatt hour, that's £1.20 compared to £1.62 on the southeast array. Now that begs the question. Um, there's lots of reasons. My roof pitch is only 30 degrees. If you've got a st steeper roof pitch, northwest panels won't perform so well. My string sizes are really, uh, really work well that I've got 
eight in series and then two lots of eight in parallel. They go into the inverter. My inverter really likes that voltage range. It really likes that amperage range. And so there's a, a good amount of efficiency that is coming from it. Diffused light is an underrated uh, issue, especially in the winter months. So my conclusion, let me know in the comments, should you fit panels for best orientation or should you fit panels for the largest surface area? Or should we really just be doing both? Whenever we put solar on the roof, we should absolutely fill it. And if we are really high users, then we should think about filling every roof orientation and every area that we have just so that we can you know reduce our bills and do our little bit thank you for watching like comment subscribe all of that stuff and share this please thank you good night